Peter goes back to the life that he knew before he ever met the Lord. Do, do you remember what he did? He went back to fishing. You know, I've noticed that Christians who have this journey, who really fall on their faces, who feel like they've blown it so bad that, that God has finished with them, they'll often go back to the life they knew before they met Christ, back to the familiar, back to the comfortable, back to what they had been delivered from. That what Peter is about to do is not an uncommon characteristic. Maybe some of you have been there, done that. Maybe some of you are doing that right now, right back in the midst of what you've been delivered from. Because you just figure in your mind, I've, I've blown it anyway. I don't think God can take me the way that I am now after what I've done. So Peter quits and goes back to fishing. And, and I'm going to take you to John 21, verses 2 and 3, because I want to point something out. Quitting in your faith is dangerous business. Now, Peter was convinced that he had messed up so much that God was done with him. So Peter goes back to fishing, but I want you to notice Peter doesn't quit alone. Watch this. This is a really valuable lesson for us. John 21, verse 2. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, which were James and John, and two other disciples were together. Now here's what Peter says. I'm going out to fish. Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. I want you to note here that when Peter quit in his faith, he didn't quit alone. He took a whole bunch of people that were really close to him out with him. I mean, this is staggering numbers. You've got Jesus' 12 disciples. Well, Peter's out. He knows he's blown it too bad. But when he throws in the towel, look who follows him. Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and two other disciples. This is more than half the disciples. And at this point, Judas is out. Eight disciples gone. We're down to, we're down to only four disciples who aren't going back to their old life. And if you read John 21 carefully, Jesus has even already appeared to the disciples, which blows my mind. They know He's back. They know He's risen from the dead. But Peter still believes, even though Jesus rose from the dead, I know that as far as my life goes, I'm done. Jesus, I'm as cooked as Judas Iscariot is. Judas betrayed him, but I denied him. Count us two out. I guess it's Jesus and the ten disciples now. So he throws in the towel. I've messed up too bad. And when he throws in the towel, six other good ones throw in the towel as well. You know, maybe you're struggling in this area tonight. Some of you are thinking about just giving up. I need you to understand that even though we're always told that our faith is private and personal, that's not true. Our faith is public and communal. We do faith in Christianity together. And when you throw in the towel, it doesn't just impact you. It is devastating to those that you have built into, to those close around you, to those who have been impacted by your testimony, your walk, the spiritual gifts that work through you. And when you just say, I quit, it is devastating to the kingdom of God. Now I want, you to take, I want to take you to the end of John chapter 21. Because here is where Jesus comes to Peter and has a personal conversation after all this has taken place. So Jesus has just interrupted their boat trip. They had an all-night fishing trip and they caught nothing. I'm sure Jesus made sure that that was the case. Y'all aren't going to have a successful night abandoning me. 
And they come back to the shore, and Jesus ends up making them breakfast. And it says in John 21, verse 15, that when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, a very formal address, do you love me more than these? Clearly, he's not talking about the fishes. He's talking about the fellow disciples. We're best friends, Peter. Do you love me the most? It's a very personal, intimate question. Yeah, Lord, he says, you know that I love you. Again, Jesus said, and this is like a really tender topic right now with Peter. Again, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. Same reply as the first time. Take care of my sheep. Feed my lambs. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now there's an awkwardness when someone asks you the same question three times in a row. Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. This is John's very simple version of the Great Commission. Feed my sheep. Do you think that you've let God down? Have you failed? Have you done some things? Have you said some things? Have you gone through some seasons where you're just not as close maybe as you once were? You feel distant from God and you don't know how to bridge that gap because of your behavior, because of your choices, because of your failures? I want you to hear God ask you a question. Do you love me? I know you messed up. Do you, do you love me? How would you answer that question? Uh, if you're anything like me, I'd be, oh God, yeah, I love you, but I've made some messes. So then maybe God would ask you again, do you, do you, I know you made messes. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I, I really love you. A third time. Do, I need you to get this, coming from the voice of God. Do you love me? And we could respond even like Peter. God, you, you know my heart. Right now in this moment, I, I love you. I, you know all things. God would say, I want you to get involved in loving other people. Feed my sheep. Take the gospel to those who are in the darkness. Be a source of joy and strength and comfort and love to your brothers and sisters who are hurting around you. Feed my sheep. You know, if the resurrection of Jesus teaches us anything, it's that Jesus does not give up on His disciples. He does not give up on His own. If the resurrection of Jesus teaches us anything, it's that in the darkest of circumstances, we have hope. God is our source of hope. There is always hope. 